What's your emergency? Are you police? Yes. I got Bill Petty here who's hurt, my neighbor. Okay. All right, you get in the house. You two, get in the house. Get in the house. I need a one-on-one -on -one here now. All now. Right. This 911 call was the terrifying end to seven hours of unimaginable evil that left people across America gasping in horror. As his family's suburban home burst into flames, Dr. Bill Pettit lay in his neighbor's yard, bloodied and beaten, having lost everything. The day began like any other Sunday for the close-knit Pettit family at morning church services, Bill, a prominent doctor, had been married to his wife Jennifer, a nurse, for 22 years. Their 17-year-old daughter Haley was a popular A student, captain of the basketball team, and headed to Dartmouth in the fall. Their youngest, 11-year-old Michaela, Is it on? was just starting to come into her own. She loved music, cooking shows, and had a shy smile that lit up the room. On that summer day, police say a convicted felon out on parole randomly spotted Michaela and her mother Jennifer at a neighborhood store. After following them home, he and another career criminal allegedly plotted out an unthinkable night of terror. After Michaela cooked Sunday dinner for her family, Bill fell asleep in his sunroom while the girls watched Army Wives and then headed off to bed. At 3 a.m., the two armed intruders broke in. Bill was the first victim. He was bludgeoned with a baseball bat, then tied unconscious to a pole in the basement. Next, Jennifer, Haley, and Michaela were bound to their beds and tortured throughout the night. At daybreak, Jennifer was forced to go to a bank in order to withdraw $15,000. She desperately hoped the money would save her family's lives. Next, the unspeakable happened. 11-year-old Michaela was allegedly sexually assaulted while tied to her childhood bed, surrounded by her stuffed animals. Just minutes after returning with the money, Jennifer was raped and strangled to death. Her body and other rooms in the house were then doused with gasoline. In the basement, Bill woke up. With his feet still bound, he hopped up the stairs and rolled across the yard to get help. By then, it was too late. The Pettit's home went up in flames. 17-year-old Haley had managed to free herself from her restraints, but couldn't escape the fire in time. She died at the top of the stairs from smoke inhalation. Young Michaela died still bound to her bed. Her mom, Jennifer's body, was burned beyond recognition. Today, I have come to Connecticut to talk to the sole survivor of this horrific tragedy. Dr. Bill Pettit is telling his story for the first time. So we're here in your parents' home. We you've are. come back home. Yes. Mm -hmm. Where you've been here since the tragedy of your family being murdered. Yes, yeah. since I left the hospital. Mm -hmm. And... I can imagine that that family support has meant the world to you, has meant everything to you. Yeah, in retrospect, uh, without my family, I would have been totally lost. Mm -hmm. You know, so I don't, I don't know how you get through something like this without the family and a huge village of support. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us about the moment when you were conscious of the fact that you had lost your entire family? You're in the hospital, and your family arrives. Your father and your sister and the rest of the family walk into the room. Can you tell us what that was like? Uh, I think I was still dazed and confused. I had retched and thrown up for a while, and then I saw my dad appear in the doorway, and. I, they say I asked about the girls. I really don't have a memory of it. He said that's what I asked about, and he was just sobbing and shaking his head side to side. And I started to sob. Mm -hmm. And he didn't say anything, I don't think. He, he may have said they're all gone. Mm -hmm. 
but you, uh, you, you deny it. Your brain doesn't want to believe it, so you push it out. Mm -hmm. And at the memorial service, you were able to speak. How were you able to do that? I felt a strong need to speak for Jennifer Haley and Michaela. Mm -hmm. So I had written something the night before uh, in the hospital and uh, felt that I, I needed to be the person to, to say it. You know, I was a little unstable, but uh, a good friend helped me up to the, to the lectern and then I just spoke what I had written and spoke from the heart. Mm -hmm. If there's anything to be gained from the senseless deaths of my beautiful family, it's for us to all go forward and help a neighbor, fight for a cause, love your family, do some of these things with your family in your own little way to spread the work of these three wonderful women. Could you feel their presence with you? Did you feel that you were somehow standing for them, with them, they with you? That, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted it to be positive because it was such a terrible, terrible thing. And I wanted people to have positive, positive memories and know who they were. Are you able now to think of their life and the fullness of their life, or are you still more focused on the day they died and how they died? There's some of both. Mm -hmm. uh, the daytime is easier mm -hmm. to focus on positive things. On and, the life, on yes, their life. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Falling asleep and waking up are the hardest times, the transitions from sleep to wakefulness. Uh, pretty much comes back every, every day. Mm -hmm. um, Do you fear going to sleep or you don't look forward to it? In the beginning, I feared sleeping. Because in the beginning, you didn't sleep for months, I heard. You didn't sleep for months. No, two or three months, maybe two hours a night. Mm -hmm. I was completely, completely fried. Mm -hmm. I was walked around in a daze from mm -hmm. just intrusive thoughts banging into your brain every second, every minute. You know, replaying events over and over and over and over again in your mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The entire intrusion? Yeah, different pieces, different parts. Did you go through the what ifs? A uh, hundred thousand times, mm -hmm. every what if. And what were some of yours? What if, what if someone had slid the latch over on the basement door. What if, what if I had been able to get free earlier? What if Jen had just stayed at the bank instead of coming out? I, I, I think she came out because she didn't want to leave us at the house. She knew we were there. So what ifs like that? Thousands of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, any, anyone you can imagine. Mm -hmm. Magical thinking mm -hmm. to make it all better. Just a few days ago, Bill delivered his victim impact statement to the court and to convicted murderer Stephen Hayes. Bill spoke in great detail about the devastating impact losing his entire family has had on his life. You said in your victim impact statement that, of course, you thought of killing yourself. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, I went to sleep one night in a nice home with a loving family and basically awakened in an emergency room naked on a gurney with no clothes, no family, no home. Because everything was destroyed. Everything was gone. Mm -hmm. 
At one point during the seven hours of torture, one of Jennifer's attackers drove her to the bank, ordering her to withdraw $15,000. In a desperate attempt to save her family, Jennifer slipped the teller a note. A bank manager then phoned police. There's emergency. We have a lady who says that her husband and children are being held at their house. The people are in a car outside the bank. She is getting $15,000 to bring out to them. If the police are told, they will kill the children and the husband. She says they are being very nice, and they told her they wouldn't hurt anybody. If she got back there with the money, she believes them. Just 33 minutes after that 911 call, Jennifer and her two daughters were dead. Describe for us what this has meant for you to lose your entire family. Well... You define yourself in different stages of your life by different things. I was at an age 50 with a wife and two wonderful daughters where you're defined by your family. Mm -hmm. You know, the children are the jewels of the parents. Mm -hmm. And so all your hopes for the future are in your children. You know your wife is your partner, your, your, your teammate, and you're the two co-captains on the ship steering mm -hmm. through life. And uh, when you lose it all, and someone burns your house, you lose your past and your future and your, in the present. Mm -hmm. So I had a very hard time with Mm -hmm. Many, many people who sent me many religious and philosophical tracks to tell me to be in the moment mm -hmm. and live in the moment. And I thought that's, that's okay for people who have a past they can touch and a future they can dream for. But when you feel like a lot of your past is gone and there's no future, mm -hmm the present loses some meaning. Mm -hmm. Why did you make the decision not to kill yourself when you certainly thought about it? Religious reasons? Mm -hmm. I thought in the afterlife, if I was going to meet up with my family, if I did that, then maybe I would never meet up with them again. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't willing to take that chance. Uh, I thought that uh, they would not approve and they would want me to go forward. Did you often think about, do you still think about why were you the lone survivor of your family? I think chance, luck, fate. Hard to say God's will. And where are you with God now? Hmm. God, hmm. God, and, God and I are had a little bit of a standoff. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe in God. I was pretty angry with him for a long time, or her. Uh, and I talked to a lot of smart people and they said, it's okay to be angry with God. God can take it. But I can't, I don't believe that it's God's will. Um, I don't think God has control over everything that happens on earth. Hi, YouTubers. I'm excited to give you an update about our own YouTube channel. Now you can find new videos every day. They're the kind of videos that will make you look at life differently. They may even make you laugh a little bit. Subscribe to the OWN channel today, and we'll see you on YouTube.